Welcome. Today, Asa Bloy announced its third interim report in 2022. And I'm standing next to our CEO, Nico Delvaux. Welcome. Can you please summarize the report? Morning, Bjorn. Yes, and I can do that. It was a very good uh, quarter. We have an organic growth of 14%. Uh, percent. We have a continued uh, strong contribution of uh, the Americas division and entrance uh, systems. But also in this quarter, uh, global technologies uh, was uh, contributing to the growth in an important way. And a good uh, operating margin of 15.6%, uh, 60 base points better than the comparable figure same quarter uh, a year ago with record uh, operating uh, profit. And then also good uh, uh, cash flow with a cash conversion of 95% in the quarter. So overall, very happy with uh, the result. You mentioned global technology and global technology sticks out in a positive way. Can you please tell us what has driven that positive development? I would say that all business areas, as well on the HID side as on the global solution side, have uh, contributed in a strong way. But what made the difference is definitely on the HID side, PAX uh, business, uh, our cart and reader business, where you know we had challenges with uh, ship shortages and we had to redesign some of our readers and our controllers to uh, uh, um, chips that were more readily available in the market that we have done in uh, Q2. And now we were able to um, reduce part of that uh, backlog that we uh, built up. That's important top line wise, it's also important uh, bottom line wise because PAX is also an important uh, profit margin uh, generator. And then the other aspect is um, all the travel related business, hospitality and citizen uh, ID that saw uh, a better recovery uh, in the quarter. Again, important for global solutions, top line wise, but also bottom line wise. Thank you. In the CEO statement, you mentioned that you have initiated some cost measures in some markets. Why and where are you initiating those ones? <laughs> I think in general we still still very strong uh, market conditions as well on the commercial as on the residential side. But we have seen some weakness in some uh, European uh, markets on the residential side. In France, in the Benelux and in the UK. Where the more, I would say, direct consumer related channel, the DIY uh, channel. And also our uh, distributor channel uh, partners started to uh, destock um, some uh, uh, some of their uh, uh, businesses, and therefore took the decision there to adapt our cost to uh, a lower uh, reality. But even in, the, in those markets, we still see good momentum on the uh, uh, commercial uh, side. So overall, the picture still looks uh, positive, but I mean, that's what we have to do. We have to be agile and, and react in, in those markets where we see a slowdown to the new reality. And how does it look in the US? I think in the US, we still see very good uh, momentum, as well on the residential side as on the commercial side. We had slightly higher growth on the commercial than on, on residential, but both very solid, um, I would say despite uh, a difficult comparison with a year ago. And that might be the biggest challenge now also going forward into Q4, where we have for Americas a, a very uh, difficult comparison. If I remember right, we grew 17% in Q4 um, last year. So that, that will be the biggest challenge. Thank you very much, Nico. We look forward to speaking to you again after the Q4 report in February. Thank you, Bjorn.